Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews right now. I'd really appreciate it and I'd be able to send watches like this to your inbox on a daily basis. If you like our watches, you can see them and you can purchase them on our website, thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches 24 hours a day on thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing an emerging vintage classic an 8.5 million serial number, thus roughly 1981, Rolex Oyster Perpetual Sea Dweller 16660, the wicked one, the triple six. Let's take a look at the stance on the wrist. Now, my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see this is a 40 millimeter Rolex sports watch. Before the Super Case, the Sea Dweller and the Submariner were far more similar dimensionally. You can see that this one is fairly chunky, but with a sloped case flank 14.8 millimeters of thickness, isn't necessarily going to impede a tighter sleeve or cuff. From lug to lug, the watch, which has a wonderfully full and original case, is 48 millimeters, and because we are looking at a early SEL solid end link Rolex bracelet, we have a 49.7 millimeter end link to end link horizontal measurement across the wrist. You'll also want to know for accessory sake because these look great on straps and they have the strap tool holes. 20 millimeters is the lug spacing. You can see the watch sits well on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist and I would say right down to about 14 centimeters circumference you're probably going to find that this one wears well and sits securely. All right let's talk a bit about some of the ancillaries. The 93160A bracelet was a bit of a breakthrough for Rolex. The beginning of solid end links on the Oyster Professional series, you can see that the bracelet's in excellent shape. It has a little bit of play in it, but considering its age, it is a D serial number, so late 70s, it's in outstanding condition and has absolute structural integrity. On the underside, you'll note even then, Rolex knew how to make a bracelet. Large gaps between links to aerate the wrist as well as avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. You can see that. All of the marks on the clasp are deep, fresh, and crisp. The clasp itself secured by a clamshell, and you will note multiple adjustment available through multiple strap tool holes, but this one does feature a Rolex fold-out diving extension should you wish to extend across the wrist while wearing a dive suit or simply a thick winter coat or sweater. Features 592 end links, which I will try to display for you. There you can see. 91 or 93 160 and 592 end links. You can see the case back. I know there's often interest in the case backs of watches that do not feature sapphires. Here you can see it is a later double crown Rolex 666 case back. Turning to the case, you can see that it is wonderfully full. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer now that the watch is off the wrist. Get it in focus, give ourselves a bit more light. All right, helium escape valve, present and correct. You'll also note that the strap tool apertures on each of the lugs have plenty of material left. None of the spring bars are poking through the flanks. And you can see head on when you look at the lugs from both sides, that they are even and full, with even some evidence of the original beveling still present. This case has survived the ravages of time with grace. Of course, you can see this one features a Rolex trip lock crown, and as the 666 was the first generation sea dweller with a unidirectional rotating bezel, this one features a unidirectional bezel, present and correct. Now, it is a replacement bezel insert, as the luminescent pearl on this bezel is the only Luminova component on the entire watch, so fair warning, it has a Rolex service bezel from later on. That just makes it a more usable timepiece, and of course, because it is a unidirectional rotating bezel, you can actually still use this vintage dive watch for diving. It still passes its factory rated water resistance tolerance tests, and you will note that the dive bezel, always more convenient than a chronograph, line it up and now you've got an impromptu 0 to 60 minute timer. You will note that this being part of the 8.5 million series, it has a gloss dial base with applied white gold indices and hands and indices are tritium. They're both service items. My belief is that because this would have been a first generation gloss dial triple six, the watch was made from about 78 to 88. And in 1981, there was a transition from the printed dial with matte base to the gloss finish with the applied white gold. But the first versions of those dial actually featured 
a crazing or cracking. If you can imagine spider cracks, it was that sort of issue. And Rolex made it a point to replace those. And you know, because we'll get close here, the Sea Dweller nomenclature on the first generation white gold index gloss bases, they actually did not feature that little, unhack the movement, they did not feature that little hyphen between C and Dweller. The later gloss white gold dials did, and so I believe this is a period 1980s Rolex replacement for the original crazed dial. Sometimes those get so ragged that they start to flake, thus the period Rolex replacement highly desirable. Now the timepiece does feature a caliber 3035 among its many firsts, and we may as well roll through them. Unidirectional bezel, the first sea dweller to feature that. Sapphire crystal, the first sea dweller to feature that. A quick set date, the first sea dweller to feature that. And a high beat 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate, the first sea dweller to feature that as well. And of course, the SEL solid end link bracelet. So those are a lot of famous firsts, and as a result, the watch wears and operates much like a modern Rolex. We already talked about the fact that it is still swimmable, but sapphire crystal for scratch resistance, mechanically tough with a high beat caliber. The 27 joule caliber 3035 was a first generation 4 hertz Rolex in-house automatic. The primary difference between this and the 3135 is that this has a slower barrel, 27 versus 31 joules, and this one also features a single sided balance cock rather than a full balance bridge, but it features hacking or stop seconds, just like its newer brother. The quick set date, it features a COSC chronometer certification and a tough free sprung balance with micro Stella adjustment nuts for adjustment of the timing. It also features a Breguet overcoil hairspring, so in pursuit of that chronometer certification, it can robustly resist the effects of gravity, that is, gravitationally induced timing deviation in any position. These are collectible watches, and this one in outstanding condition inside and out, original Rolex factory parts on the inside, original full and even case on the outside. A everyday driver that is nevertheless a speculative investment, and not too speculative at that. These are already beginning to rise in value, so if you want a wearable classic, the Rolex 666, the wicked one, is right up your alley. And I'm back with the Rolex Sea Dweller 666. As promised, the luminescent pearl is the only non-tritium component on this watch. Take the plunge with the wicked one on our website.